very pleased today to have with us uh, Dr. Thomas Mann uh, from the Brookings Institution. I won't go into his uh, voluminous uh, CV because you all got that when we sent out the invitation, but we're extremely pleased to be here and also very pleased to have been working with the University of Melbourne's Gretton Institute, a, uh, a new uh, think tank that uh, we're very pleased to partner up with them uh, to sponsor some of his travel around the country, but, uh, but his visit to Australia in its entirety is uh, sponsored by the Grattan Institute as, as their speaker, and John Daly is here today uh, from them, so thanks for your work on that. And uh, without further ado, uh, the dope from Washington, as we say. <laughs> <laughs> I gave Scott that line, just so you know. I said one of the, uh, one of the best ways of uh, introducing a speaker uh, when you want to be brief. And now the latest dope from Washington, I give you Tom Mann. John, it's good to see you again. What a, what a treat it was. Uh, I think I see some interns here that I saw in Washington as well. So great to, great to have you all here. What a treat it was. Last night I, I went uh, to the budget presentation and, and saw the the drama and the theater involved in this. It's always good to do comparative politics and compare the, uh, the nature of our events and in our respective, uh, respective countries. I, uh, um, I thought the, uh, the back bench, the opposition benches uh, were, were quite lively in their responses. I, it, uh, I, I was told it would be a quiet presentation and with little response, uh, um, but it, I felt I was right back at question period and lively politics, and frankly, that's what uh, Washington has become. Uh, you know, there's much more in the way of sort of partisan cat calls and, and reactions uh, on the floor, and I think it reflects some similarities in, in our politics. Well, you know, this was the, uh, this past weekend was the, President Obama's first appearance at a major journalistic uh, uh, dinner uh, event. He skipped the gridiron. Uh, this was very traumatic to the news industry. That's the, the most sort of oldest and prestigious, and a new president always comes, but uh, he, had, he said no, he's planned to be at Camp David. I mean, it's not that far to get from Camp David by helicopter, but he said he'd promised Michelle he would be with their, their daughters, and so Joe Biden uh, had to fill in, and it was, it was a little awkward. This was, this was uh, early in his term. I think it was, uh, uh, it was about three weeks before Easter, so Biden apologized uh, uh, for the president, said uh, he just couldn't be here. He's preparing for Easter. And then he said, he thinks it's about him, <laughs> which, I, which, which was really a, a wonderful line to the assembled. And so I was so pleased to go on YouTube and, and uh, hear Obama himself play. You, I'm sure you've heard this uh, replayed, but I, I loved as he was talking about his first and second hundred days, you know. During the second hundred days, we will design, build, and open a library dedicated to my first hundred days. <laughs> my next hundred days will be so successful, I will complete them in 72 days. <laughs> And on the 73rd day, I will rest. <laughs> there, there is something, um, uh, something about the importance of, uh, of making fun of yourself, especially when there's this feeling that somehow you're getting a free ride, that you're so popular that the media is afraid to sort of take you on. He, he's, many of you uh, covered my campaign. All of you voted for me, he said to the assembled group. And then he looked over and he said, excuse me, except for the Fox table, <laughs> which, was, which was perfect. But it's, it's, uh, it, it's sort of actually uh, an, an important thing to do because there's this natural instinct in, uh, in American journalism that if a, 
if a politician is riding high, he uh, it's even more important not to be in the tank and somehow to to be critical uh, of them and try to give some voice to the opposition. Um, uh, but it isn't very easy to do that uh, uh, all the time, and uh, and we're seeing uh, we're seeing some of that now. Um, listen, I. I'd be delighted to chat about any aspects of uh, of politics in America or comparative Australian American. My my impressions of uh, of the budget presentation here and back home and of the reaction of the opposition party is, in spite of the difference, huge difference in scale, uh, is remarkably similar. Uh, and uh, if you would like to pursue that, I'd be happy to chat with you about it. But I, I did want to open with a couple of remarks about, about the state of our political institutions, and in particular, the, the sense it, in which our Congress, our first branch of government in a separated system, has fallen on very, very hard times. I have spent almost 40 years in Washington watching American politics and trying to understand it. I've, uh, I've come to appreciate the Congress in particular. It's a remarkable institution. I've opposed term limits. I've, I've uh, supported pay raises. I've uh, resisted the populist attacks on the institution. And then in more recent times, I joined the critics. and. Uh, and wrote with my dear friend and colleague Norm Ornstein a, a a very critical book, but trying to trying to trace the changes back uh, to the years uh, we first came to Washington, uh, back in uh, while the Vietnam War was still was still raging. Those were the uh, those were the times when. Uh, uh, Bob Dole and uh, George McGovern could engaged in pitched battles on the on the floor over the war, uh, really vigorous rhetoric, and then you'd see them walk off the floor arm in arm uh, uh, as they talked about uh, how they're going to put together a majority coalition to finance food stamps, where they agreed. That is, there there was tension and emotion, uh, but the two were not separate tribes. There was a fair amount of uh, opportunity to work across party lines, uh, to engage in, in serious talk. It wasn't all set by virtue of one's ideological views and doctrinal purity. Uh, it was a different world. It had its own problems, but over the years, the and this is a broad process whose seeds were planted in the 60s and developed over a period of decades, but a deep ideological polarization of the political parties put particular pressures on, uh, on the Congress and its relationship with the, with the executive branch. The Madisonian system was not uh, designed to be a, a system of party responsibility as a parliamentary system. And, and Madison designed ways of creating incentives for individuals elected to different institutions to, to generate institutional patriotism out of, as a way of advancing their own objectives. But over the years, party and ideology came to Trump institution, and we saw a uh, uh, development of some really dysfunctional uh, behavior in our political institutions, and certainly a very dispiriting time in American public life. Uh, the decline of deliberation was really shocking. Committees uh, became perfunctory. Uh, uh, much legislation was written uh, in the leadership uh, offices with selected lobbyists invited in to help. Um, conference committees were a charade, uh, uh, existing in name only, with decisions uh, made uh, quite apart from that. Uh, the regular order of the institution uh, was set aside in the House of Representatives in order to advance a, a partisan agenda. 